Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are excited you are here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all throughout the presentations, please feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there and ready and available to answer any questions you may have. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions happening tonight. So please feel free to sign up for more sessions and listen to all the wonderful information that's being shared where you signed up for this one. And lastly, this recording will be available a week from today. It will be available at strivescan.com backslash Minnesota. We are, just to take note, we are in session E6, in session E6 where my mouse is circling. So this is the order of presentations for this session. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Flor Florida Southern College. All right, awesome. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Hopkins. I serve as one of the assistant directors of admission at Florida Southern. Uh, Florida Southern is located right in Lakeland, Florida. Um, we are halfway between Tampa and Orlando, right smack dab in the middle of the state. Uh, Florida Southern is one of, one of Florida's oldest private church affiliated colleges, founded in 1883. We are a smaller school, about 3,500 students on campus, and we have about 70 different programs of studies to choose from. These stem from our five different schools. Um, our largest and most popular program is our business program. We hold an accreditation that puts us in the top 5% of business programs in the entire world. So if you're interested in things like marketing, management, international business, uh, sports business management, that's a great fit. Um, we offer a direct entry nursing program. Um, so what that means is that you start nursing classes your first semester, you start clinicals as sophomores. Um, so that is in our School of Nursing and Health Sciences. We have a brand new School of Physical Therapy, including our doctorate program. Um, our education program is uh, the top ranked private education program in the state of Florida. And then we have our School of Arts and Sciences. So that's going to encompass things like biology, marine biology, chemistry, communications, computer science, psychology, criminology, political science. Um, I could go on and on. Um, about half of our students do choose to double major and it's very common for students to at least pick up a minor at Florida Southern. So for students who have a lot of different passions, a lot of different interests, we really encourage those students to take advantage of all of our different programs and really make your education your own. Inside of the classroom, our students learn by uh, hands-on experience. So whether that is our first year biology students doing antibiotic research, whether that's our students presenting it at conferences nationwide each year, we want to make sure our students are active participants in their education. So our classes aren't in a lecture style. Um, our students are really getting that hands-on experience that is a better way to learn in my opinion, a more interesting way to learn um, and will ultimately help you go on to a program, a grad program, a, um, a job after graduation research. We wanna make sure our students are getting that hands-on experience inside of the classroom at Florida Southern. When I think about FSC and what sets us apart from other colleges, I think about our three guarantees. Um, so we offer all students an opportunity to travel the world, do an internship and graduate in four years. Uh, the study abroad program is a week to month long trip. Um, it is built into your tuition and you're traveling alongside faculty members, earning course credit, um, taking what you've been learning inside of the classroom and experiencing a new culture, um, a new language, a new country. Um, so for example, we've had uh, bio students travel to New Zealand and Hawaii. Um, we had a culture and cuisine trip travel to Italy. So lots of really fun opportunities to travel the world. Um, the internships might be a graduation requirement. Um, we really see the benefit, again, in making sure our students are active participants in their education. So whether that's inside of the classroom or 
in an internship in Lakeland or in Tampa, Orlando, DC, even internationally. Um, our students are building their resume, making professional contacts, um, and um, maybe even graduating with a job offer. And then our third guarantee is a guaranteed on-time graduation. So you are investing in yourself and your education. Ultimately, um, you know, we're investing right back in you as well. Um, so we wanna make sure that you are graduating with a four-year degree in that four-year time period. Um, we have students working with academic advisors starting day one at orientation, the moment you step on campus. We have students active and involved within their major starting again that first semester. Um, so we want to make sure our students are ultimately successful, both at Florida Southern and then, of course, after graduation. Outside of the classroom, we have a very active campus community. We are a residential campus with about 40% of our students coming from out of state and internationally. We guarantee housing for all four years and we have a lot to do. Um, over 160 different clubs and organizations, uh, Greek life, campus ministries, service organizations, honor societies, uh, division two athletics, intramurals, club sports. 100% um, of our students are involved in something on campus. Um, so there's a lot that our students can get involved with. With an application, um, it is free to apply. We accept the Common App, Coalition App, or one through our website. We are test optional um, this year and looking forward to next year, if not for the future after that. Um, we do recommend if you fall within our admitted student profile or exceed that, that you do submit test scores, um, but we no longer require SAT or ACT scores. With an application, we also automatically review students for merit scholarship based on your GPA and test score if you choose to submit that. We are a scholarship stacking school. So if you are awarded any outside aid through your school, community, church, through our athletic program or fine arts program, it does stack on top of that merit scholarship. Um, that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much um, and enjoy the rest of this college fair. Awesome, thank you so much. Our next presenter is from Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. Hello, my name is Josh Cleveland from Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College. And I'm excited to share with you just a little bit about our college. We are a tribal college and a state college located about two hours north of Minneapolis. We're about a half hour away from Duluth, Minnesota. And I've got some pictures to show you. So this is what it looks like when you're walking up our main sidewalk. Here's a summer concert taking place. We're located on 40 acres of pine trees. It's a gorgeous campus in all the seasons. The campus, the building is set up in the shape of a Thunderbird. And there's all sorts of neat architectural features to celebrate culture and just to help people feel comfortable and a real connection to the outdoors with all the windows. Some of the programs that are popular, and these are two-year programs, so you can go to school for two years and then start working right away. We have law enforcement, including all the hands-on training that you'd need, like driving the squad cars. Another hands-on program we offer is the two-year nursing degree. And this allows you to get out and start working in a hospital or a clinic. And then if you're interested, you can go on and do further training. We do have a fine arts degree. We've got two local artists and you'll get the opportunity to explore many different areas of art. In this particular major, you'd probably be looking at transferring on to a four-year school. Then we have GIS, which is kind of like geography and maps, but on steroids. If you've ever used Google Maps or some GPS unit, uh, you would actually be the one using the powerful software to make applications using the data and we actually partner with NASA. So our students, uh, many students have gone down to Huntsville, Alabama and done NASA summer internships. 
We have human services, which is pre-social work. The nice thing here, you can go to school for two years, start working in the field of counseling, drug addiction, find out if you like it. If so, continue more education. If not, it makes for a nice transition point to be able to move into some other helping profession. And this picture reminds me to share that every program has different clubs. So here the Human Services Club is doing a big holiday celebration with Santa, cookies, uh, gift giveaway. Every major has that sort of a club and it gives you the chance to kind of try out what you might be doing. We've got great science labs and we get our students outside doing some real research. We offer the Ojibwe language. We have four levels. So if you complete all four levels, you actually earn a certificate, which allows you to go back into the classroom and teach. And we do have elementary education and child development. You'll see some of our graduates out in the classroom. We have a multimedia and production degree. Which if you think marketing and social media, it combines a lot of these aspects. This is another one of those programs where you do two years with us and then probably transfer on to go get a four-year degree. And the final program I'm gonna share with you is our electric utility technology. This is a hands-on degree. Um, it could be something that you'd do if you were thinking engineering, it would be your first two years, but with the two-year degree, you can start off at about 40 to $50 an hour starting, and there's great job placement. A few more pictures just to show you a bit of the campus. We do a big welcome feast the first day of each semester on campus food service and the dorms. It's apartment style, very comfortable. You can cook your own food. And we've got sports. Students at the two-year level really appreciate that there's a spot for you. If you've played high school ball, there's a really good chance that you could play football, volleyball, or men's and women's basketball. And then research shows that getting involved in different clubs, and these are just pictures from some of the different activities on campus, getting involved in things like the newspaper, the Environmental Institute, whatever your passion is, get involved right away, start making friends because that's going to help you be more successful as a college student. Ultimately, this is all about you finding a dream, finding a passion, working your way towards it. Will it be easy? No, but is it worth the investment? Absolutely. And we've got lots of great support like free tutoring for all students. You'll find that college is quite a bit different than high school in that you're not sitting in a desk for eight hours a day, but you actually might only be in a specific classroom for a couple hours each day or for three, four days a week. And then there's going to be a lot of added responsibility to study outside of the classroom. But many students appreciate this because you can work collaboratively, socially in a group, you can work on your own, you can listen to music that you might like, you can study outside. So there's a little more flexibility and you're working towards a passion that you're interested in. So there's a whole bunch more that I'd love to share with you, but I wanna just leave you with your dreams matter. And so thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for some great information that was shared. Um, just a reminder that if you have any questions, please feel free to submit your questions through the Q&A button at, towards near the bottom of your screen. Um, our representatives are there and ready to answer your questions. Next, we are hearing from a representative from Gus Davis Adolphus College. Thank you. My name is Alan Meyer. I'm a representative from the admission office here at Gustavus. We're in Southern Minnesota. And I'm gonna describe Gustavus a little bit differently. I'm gonna give you 10 different numbers that will help describe what Gustavus is and what Gustavus can offer for you. So the first number I'm gonna give you is 1862. Uh, 1862 is the year that Gustavus was founded um, by Swedish Lutheran immigrants. Now we're a national liberal arts and sciences college um, that's consistently ranked in the top 40 to 80 National Liberal Arts Colleges in the US. The next number is one. 
We are one hour south of Minneapolis St. Paul. So we're in the southern part of Minnesota, the state of Minnesota in the United States. The next number is 2300 students. We have students from um, uh, 2300 students that are on campus and almost 90% of our students live on campus. Um, also 20% of our students are coming from um, backgrounds that are underrepresented, students of color typically, and 41 states and 25 countries are also represented on campus. Did you want to screen share? Sorry to I interrupt. Didn't. No, I'm just, no, thanks for offering them. Thank you. The next number I'm gonna give you is 15. Um, Gustavus has been a test optional school for 15 years now. We were one of the first schools in the upper Midwest to be test optional. And what that means is we've always been a holistic admission uh, assessment college. So we're always gonna look at you as a whole, not just a number. And that's always the way it's been here. To give you an idea of the kind of students who are coming to Gustavus, our average GPA for incoming students is about 3.7. And if you do choose to submit test scores, our average is between a 27 and a 28 on the ACT. Okay, 72 is my next number. 72 different majors and minors are available at Gustavus. So you have many different options. Our average class at Gustavus is 16 students. Every single class is taught by a professor, not by a graduate student. And um, that gives you a little idea of the breadth of opportunities that you have. And the fact that you don't have to make a decision about your major in almost every case until the end of your first year at Gustavus. 80% is the next number. 80% of our students starting in the fall of their first year graduate in four years or less. So that's important for you to know. It is one of the highest four year graduation rates you're gonna find anywhere. Also about 90% of our students return for their sophomore year. And about 35% of our students go directly on to graduate school or advanced study after they leave Gustavus, after they graduate. My next number is 100. 100% of students, like uh, some other representatives have mentioned um, at Gustavus are involved in activities and participate in clubs, organizations, fine arts, sports, et cetera. Half of our students study abroad during their four-year experience. We have 27 different music ensembles on campus, all of which are available unrelated to major. We have 23 varsity sports, including men's and women's hockey, and also women's gymnastics. And uh, we have four touring ensembles that tour nationally and internationally coming from our music department. We have theater and dance majors, which is quite unusual. And uh, so there's just so many different things to be involved in. And we tend to attract students who really wanna be a part of a community. That's why they come to Gustavus. And related to that, my next number is seven, seven days a week. Gustavus is very much a seven day a week college. Students come here, like I said, to participate seven days a week, to be a part of a community. All of our first and second year students are required to live on campus, but many of our juniors and seniors also live on campus. They actually have to be approved to live off campus. So again, we attract students who really wanna be a part of the campus community seven days a week. And on the typical weekend, probably 70 to 80% of our students are here. So that gives you an idea of how active it is seven days a week. My next number and my second to last number is 70%. 70% of our students receive need-based assistance based upon the FAFSA. So that means um, there's lots of financial aid available for students, 70% based upon need, but about 95% of our students receive financial aid ba based either on need or eligibility and or merit-based assistance based upon talents or academic preparation. So there's a lot of financial aid to make it more affordable for you to attend Gustavus. And finally, my last number is 130. We've been lucky enough over the last couple of years to have a new $70 million science building expansion of that area and also our theater dance department. And then also uh, this year, we've been able to break ground on a new athletic facility, which is a $60 million facility that'll be done by the fall of 2023. So we're really excited to continue to add to our facilities and our resources for students. We continue to do that. Um, you can come to campus and visit and see those things, see what we're doing and meet the students. We'd encourage you to do that. The best way to see Gustavus 
is to come to campus, but in the meantime, go to our website, gustavus.edu, and check out the videos and all the different opportunities in the different departments so you can learn more about before you even get here on campus. August 1st, our application opens up. Use the common application and we'll look forward to receiving your application. Thank you very much. All great information, thank you. Our next representative is from Lynn University. Perfect, thank you so much and welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. Um, I represent Lynn University. Uh, Lynn is a small private liberal arts university in South Florida. Um, I'm sure if this is clicking. Um, I work with all of the students in Minnesota um, and different parts of the Midwest. I'm one of the senior assistant directors of admission at Lynn. Um, to give you a little bit of a background about Lynn, uh, we are located in Boca Raton, Florida, which is on the east coast of Florida in South Florida, about an hour north of Miami and 30 minutes from both the West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale airports. Uh, we are about five miles to the beach, um, so we are in a great location, very much a metropolitan area. Um, Boca Raton, I think for a lot of people has this idea of being kind of like a retirement community. Um, we have a lot of people who tend to retire down to Florida, as you may know. Um, but Boca Raton is also the complete opposite of that. So there's about 40,000 college students in the area um, among a few different universities. Um, so there's a lot for students to do in the area. Uh, Boca is actually one of the fastest growing metropolitan areas in the nation. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for internships. Um, a lot of our students do internships in the middle of the semester because their class schedule allows for that flexibility. And because we're so closely located to a lot of different businesses um, and internship op opportunities, um, it does allow for students to do multiple internships while they are at Lynn. Um, we do focus on a personalized, innovative, and global approach to our education, um, which I'll explain through this presentation. Um, but that's something that is really important to us and part of our mission. Um, we are ranked as the top most international school in the region for our size. Um, so to give you a breakdown of what Lynn University looks like, we have um, almost 3,000 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, a little over 3,000 if you include our graduate students. And they come from 47 different states and almost 100 different countries. Um, our Florida population is about 35%. So the rest of the students are coming from out of state. We have about 20% of our students who are international and um, the rest are domestic out of state students. We're seeing a growing number of students coming from the Midwest, which is really exciting. Um, so there's a really interesting community on campus um, that you'll see. To give you a bit of a breakdown of what that looks like, our admission team is very reflective of the community of students on campus, um, not for any intentional reason, it just kind of happened that way. Um, but our vice president is from South Africa, our director is from Rome, Italy. We also have people on our staff from Argentina and El Salvador. Um, I'm from New Hampshire, so I think that's pretty cool too. But it's really an interesting mix of um, staff and faculty on campus in addition to our student population. And that's what your classroom is going to look like when you're at Lynn. Um, our student to teacher ratio is 18 to one. So we really are focusing on that personalized educational experience. We want you to get to know your faculty members. They're gonna get to know you very well. Uh, so you're not just a number when you come to our campus. In addition to that, we also get to know you really well through the application process. So you'll work with me um, if you do end up applying to Lynn. Uh, and I always like to get to know our students. Uh, something that's really unique about Lynn University is our approach to our curriculum. So about 10 years ago, our faculty redesigned our curriculum, our core curriculum, probably what you know as a general education curriculum into what we call the dialogues. Um, we wanted to make sure that students were being prepared after they graduate with all of those essential skills and critical thinking, presenting, public speaking, communication, et cetera, um, team building, teamwork. Um, so across our entire core curriculum, you're learning liberal arts concepts, but you're learning them in an applicable way that uh, makes sense for your major, for your, um, your involvement in society, et cetera. So we really want our students to focus on, on building those skills while also understanding more theoretical concepts and how they apply to your career. 
So for example, um, our students, instead of, if you're not in a math-based major, we're not gonna require you to take Calculus One. We're going to maybe have you take a statistics-based course. Um, our students take a personal finance course. Um, again, same with the sciences. If you're not in a science major, you may take a course in climate change or environmental policy. Um, so it's a little bit different in terms of how we uh, present our core curriculum, which we've seen a really successful outcome for our students in terms of making sure that they're prepared after they graduate. Our core is heavily focused in reading, writing, and presenting. Um, so that's another big part of what the dialogues look like. Um, all of our majors can be found here on the screen. Um, so in addition to uh, our liberal arts core curriculum, all of our majors are focused in professional studies. So we really want to make sure that we're teaching you to prepare you for a specific industry that you're interested in. A perfect example of this is our investment management program. A lot of our students come to Lynn seeking out business programs. Um, and while we are teaching all of those core business concepts that you would get in any business major, um, specifically like investment management, you want to learn about finance, right? But now how do you apply those finance concepts to a specific career path? Um, so all of our majors are kind of focused in that way to make sure that students are understanding how to apply those core concepts to specific industries. Um, we have, um, in the last few years, integrated a three-year accelerated bachelor's degree program. So almost 25% of our students are actually pursuing a three-year accelerated bachelor's degree. This saves students a full year of tuition, um, which is phenomenal. All of our majors, um, in the Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Arts can be done in three years time. Another thing that Lynn is also known for is our iPad powered learning. So we've been recognized by Apple for four consecutive years as an Apple distinguished school. So all of our students do get an iPad when they get to campus. Saves you about 97% of your textbook costs. They'll all be free to download on your iPad. Um, so that's another thing that's part of your tuition and fees. Um, in terms of the application process, we have also been test optional for quite a few years now. So all of our students, um, we don't require test scores as part of the admission process. You can apply with the common application or um, our online application as well. Um, and it's a pretty straightforward process in terms of applying. We have an early action deadline of December 1st. Um, so that's about it from me. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Kevin. Awesome, thank you. Again, if there's any questions that you have, feel free to submit those through the Q&A button. And also feel free to also mention the name of the school that you have a specific question for. Uh, next, we have a representative from the University of Mel Melbourne. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julia, um, and I'm with the University of Melbourne, um, based in beautiful Melbourne, Australia. Um, so today, I'm just going to kind of go over um, you know, some features of our uni, um, our degrees are actually only three years. In Australia, all bachelor degrees are three years because we don't have um, gen ed requirements. Um, so it, it is affordable access to excellent, we're part ex excellence. Um, we are part of the group of eight universities, which is the Australian version of the Ivy Leagues. And of course, you get to be in beautiful Australia, which is a really beautiful, welcoming country. Um, I did a degree in Australia. I'm originally from Wisconsin, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, so Uni Melb is ranked number one in Australia, and we are ranked 25 in the world. Um, we're a large public research intensive university. So we have everything from the humanities to business to all sorts of STEM. I, programs um, and so on, even performing arts. These are just a list of our majors. So one point of difference for Australian schools is that you'll apply directly to the program rather than the university overall. So you do have to have some sort of idea of what you wanna go into, but you don't have to choose your major until your second year. Um, and this is a little bit different from other um, international schools, but we follow a bit more of a North American education model. Um, so you are able to still take elective classes and explore um, other interests. Very, very straightforward application process. It's just based on your GPA, your SAT or your ACT, and then we do require specific AP prerequisites for each program. 
Um, but yeah, no essays, no references, no personal statements, and we don't look at your extracurriculars. So your application is only going to really take about an hour of your time. But very transparent. Um, if you meet the minimum requirements, most likely you'll get an offer. You can get an idea um, of what we are looking for. So for the Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, um, we are looking for a 3.2 GPA, um, unweighted, um, and then specific APs, um, and then an SAT of 1320 or at ACT of 28. We do also take the IB, and that's a guaranteed entrance as well. For 2021, um, we do have some alternatives, and I'd be happy to, to go over with you this with you um, more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have an online stat test and an AP aggregate. Uh, the seasons are a little different down under. So SEM 1 is March to June, and SEM 2 is July to November. Um, people are often concerned that, um, you know, attending university overseas is going to be, you know, exorbitantly expensive, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, since our degrees are only three years, you're actually getting out into the workforce much sooner. Um, and you're only paying for tuition and living expenses for three years. Um, so it can be quite comparable to a lot of in-state options when you look at the total education cost. Um, you can definitely use US student loans and we have all sorts of merit-based scholarships that you're gonna be automatically considered for when you um, submit an application. We, we definitely appreciate that your education is one of the, the most important investments that you'll ever make. So we're really proud to rank seven in the world for graduate employability. Um, tons of um, really cutting edge undergraduate research, um, all sorts of um, breadth classes, internships, and so on, huge alumni network. Um, and so we are based right from we're about 10, 15 minutes um, from the heart of downtown Melbourne. Um, so we have a separate campus, quite beautiful um, old campus. We are Australia's second oldest university. So we've been around since 1853. So that means that we have all sorts of really beautiful old buildings. We definitely do have a lot of um, modern facilities as well that are really um, purpose built for, for students. So this is our design building, um, a lecture hall, and lots of really great places to hang out on campus. So definitely what, for me, one of the, the best things about Melbourne is that you're, you're actually, um, you know, going to one of the best universities in the world, but you're also living in one of the most livable cities in the world. So Melbourne was actually ranked the most livable city in the world for seven years in a row. Um, we're currently number two, but still pretty good. So many things to do. Um, we're really considered Australia's cultural and sports capital. Um, so lots of um, activities, museums, so many different clubs, societies, and things for students to do. Um, about 40% of our um, student population is international students. So there are um, everyone sort of in the same boat where they're wanting to make friends um, with one another. Um, we are only about an hour away from beautiful um, Great Ocean Road, which actually, um, you know, it's one of the most beautiful places I've seen. And what's really cool is there's koalas and kangaroos. So you can, if you're into hiking or being outdoors, there's really easy access to nature despite being in a big city of 5 million. And about 30, 40 minutes away from beach communities. Um, I would love to connect with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. So if you are interested in booking a Zoom call, please do so here and I'll pop that in the chat as well. And I really encourage you to sign up for our mailing list um, so that you're able to, to stay up to date with upcoming virtual events and scholarships. Um, thanks very much, guys. We appreciate all the great information shared so far. Our next presenter is from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. They are least or they are last, but they're certainly not least. So I um, give it up to University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you so much. 
Hi there, everyone. My name is Gabby Knauer, and I am a freshman admissions counselor in the Office of Admissions and Recruitment here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm excited to be here with you all tonight and share a bit more about what UW-Madison has to offer. So jumping right in, let's start by talking a bit about numbers. UW-Madison was founded in 1848, which means we have over 150 years of history on campus. Our total student body consists of around 45,000 students with just over 30,000 of those students being undergraduates. We welcome students from over 120 countries around the world and all 50 states in the US, making for a diverse student body that are all coming from a variety of different backgrounds. As you can see, our student to faculty ratio is 20 to one with our average class size being around 31 students. Next, let's talk a bit about the city of Madison. Perhaps some of you are familiar with the city of Madison and maybe some of you have never ventured across the border to the Badger State before. Uh, Madison is the capital of the state of Wisconsin and you can actually see the Capitol building in the center of this photo. Madison and our campus sits on what's called an isthmus, which is a narrow strip of land surrounded by two bodies of water. I love the city of Madison because you really get the best of both worlds of feeling like you're in a bigger city with a lot going on, while also being just steps away from the lake, hiking and biking trails, and many other fun Midwest outdoor activities that you may be accustomed to back in Minnesota. So you might be wondering, what's special about UW-Madison? Perhaps the biggest thing that sets us apart is our guiding principle that we've been committed to for over 100 years now, and that's known as the Wisconsin Idea. Essentially, the Wisconsin Idea is about taking the education that you gain and using it in the real world to improve people's lives across the state, the country, and even the world. As you can see, we are rated the 26th best university in the world, 13th among public universities in the US, and eighth in national research expenditures. We also produce the highest amount of Peace Corps volunteers, which again, really shows how students are using their education to help others around the world after they graduate. UW-Madison offers 125 different majors that exist within our eight undergraduate schools and colleges. We also offer over 70 different certificates, which other universities might refer to as a minor. Um, but unlike a minor, our certificates are more of a specialization and enhancement to your major, and really a way of expanding a skill set in order to make you a more marketable badger. I encourage you to research what specific majors and concentrations UW Madison has to offer that really fit your interests and goals. Along with your everyday academics and involvement in social activities, these are some of the high impact opportunities you can look forward to having as a part of your Wisconsin experience. Most students will engage with at least one of these opportunities, if not multiple. While I don't have time to talk about each of these, I do wanna highlight one of our more unique opportunities, which are our first year interest groups, or as we like to call them, SPIGs. First year interest groups are a cluster of three courses within a specific theme that you can take um, your first year on campus, and they're all taken with the same 25 students for one semester. So this is a really great way to create an initial support group of students who you will see a few times a week in a smaller class size and really give students the opportunity to make connections their first semester on campus. At UW-Madison, we utilize a holistic admission review, which means we look at every aspect of a student's application. We put the most emphasis on academic excellence, which means we are looking for students who are really challenging themselves with any rigorous coursework that is offered at their high school and typically earning A's and B's in those classes. We will also consider non-academic factors such as involvement, leadership experience, part-time jobs, and volunteer work. In order to apply, you can submit an application using either the Common Application or the UW System Application. As a part of your application, you will submit your grades and coursework, involvement, and submit two short essays. We also ask for one letter of recommendation from an academic source, which typically means a teacher or counselor. UW-Madison is currently test optional through the spring of 2023. Students will not be disadvantaged in any way if you choose not to submit a test score, but for those who feel strongly that they would like a test score considered, we will use it as an additional piece of information in our review. 
Students can apply either by our early action deadline of November 1st and hear a decision by the end of January or by a regular decision deadline of February 1st and hear back by the end of March. Lastly, I do wanna to touch quickly on financing your education at UW-Madison. It is important to understand that the cost of attendance will really vary from student to student based on a variety of factors. But one amazing benefit of coming to UW from the state of Minnesota is that you qualify for reduced out-of-state tuition through the Minnesota-Wisconsin reciprocity agreement. Additionally, you can also apply for a variety of scholarships that are offered through our Wisconsin Scholarship Hub. And you may also qualify for need-based financial aid, which is determined by filling out the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our office at any of the contacts listed here. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out our Visit Bucky website to sign up for a full information session and tour. Thank you so much for tuning in this evening and on Wisconsin. Thank you. We um, have a few minutes left into the webinar. And so um, we are gonna move over into our Q&A portion. And at this time, I'll ask all the presenters if you can turn on your video and unmute yourselves for our first question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start in the order in which um, you presented in. Um, so this sounds silly, but um, check your emails. Um, I know we send out a lot, I get it, but if you don't check your emails, you're missing out on information about visiting, scholarship. Um, there's a lot of great information in there, so make sure you have the right email address on file too. That's great advice. Um, I'm going to share that going to college is so much easier if you take note of who you are, how you're wired. College isn't just something to get through, it's something to enjoy. And so if you've run a marathon or done something kind of hard, you get to the end of it and you look back and you remember all those fond things. Uh, setting up habits right now, today, will help you regardless of where you go to college. Great advice. Um, use websites. Go visit when you can, if you're able to. And if you're not able to visit face-to-face, -face, do virtual visits. All of us offer them. And finally, don't be afraid to call a college and make certain that what you think has arrived at the college and has been received has actually been received. I have two pieces of advice. I always recommend connecting with your admission counselor, having a conversation. For a lot of us, we have holistic review process a process to our application. So we want to get to know you. The other piece of advice that I have for you is to explore the majors a little more in depth on the website. Sometimes a criminal justice major at one school is not a, the same at another. Um, so really take a look at the course catalog so you can see in depth what kind of classes you'll be taking and if that program is actually a good fit for you. Hi everyone. Um, so my advice through the college process, um, I, I really encourage you to consider international universities. There's a lot of really excellent um, options out there and a lot of them are surprisingly affordable. Um, so just take advantage of the opportunities. All great advice that ever, everyone has shared. I would say my advice would be really just think about how you can challenge yourself. Think about where you're going to be challenged, both academically and personally. I think college is really all about getting outside of your comfort zone. Um, so really think about where you're going to be able to do that. And I couldn't agree more. All great advice shared. Um, thank you so much um, to all our presenters. And I think it's always great to hear advice for those who are directly working in admissions offices and can offer uh, some advice for those who are who are going through the college search process. And uh, thank you all to all of you um, for joining us tonight. We are so excited um, that you could be here. Just a couple of things. First, um, as you close this window, a very quick 
four question survey will appear. Your feedback is appreciated. Um, and so you could take a moment to fill that out. It will be really helpful. There are more sessions going on tonight. So if you are interested in um, signing up for more, please do so where you registered for this one. And lastly, this recording will be available a week from today at strivescan.com backslash Minnesota. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great evening.